discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. I gave the phone number out, right? Uh, yeah. DJ Qualls is on the uh, show tonight. Before I get to him, let me just say uh, one thing that I know is near and dear to Drew and, 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 and yours truly as well. When you're on the freeway, when you're in that left lane, when you're in that fast lane, you gotta you got to shake your pussy ass. Do you hear me talking to you? When the speed limit is 65 and you're doing 67, that ain't fast lane material. And here's the deal. Here's the other deal with the fast lane, all you pussies. When someone comes up behind you, and they're right on you... And or kindly flashes the lights. And they're, they just see headlights yeah. that are a little too close to you for a little too long. You move over. And here's, the, here's how it works. I don't care if you're going 110. If somebody wants to get by, and they're in that left lane, you got to slide over and let them by. That's the rules of the road. And, and if big I, pussies and, out I, there. We understand that if you drive me nuts. Sometimes people are really out of it and they don't notice the headlights. But then you know, if you flash the brights, then they notice you and then they slow down. Yeah. yeah don't, get, it, it, don't get aggressive about it. If I'm riding you and you're doing, you're doing 67 and you're in the 65 fast lane and it's 1230 at night and I want to do 85 and I give you a little shot of the head beam, just a little, just a little flicker of the high beam, just slide over and get the F out of the way. Don't just stay. I you know, or hit Slow the brakes. Yeah. Or hit the brakes. But don't just keep the same speed. That that actually makes me more angry, Drew. Did, did you see this the other night when we were driving oh, yeah. home? Oh, exact yeah. same speed. Strangely it was well, two that, it was two nights ago. Something gets you tonight. Too. On the way in, yeah. tonight. Just get the hell out of the way. You're in the fast lane. It's a fast lane. We gotta get that back. I'm sorry, DJ Qualls. I'm sorry. sorry. Right. Well, the rest of the country, other than Los Angeles, considers it the passing lane. No, we don't have lane. that. Yeah, but the point is, you get in. You, you know, you don't you don't park in it. You pass it. Let me tell you people. something. Th- this city has to be the absolute worst for uh, driving. No Did you way. Notice that? Abs- no, What's absolutely the worst? not. What's I mean, the worst? Like the South people cannot drive in the South because you have a bunch of rural people coming into a big city and they don't know how to handle it. Well, where are you from? Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, really? Yeah. Your so problems. you like have horses and. We have like, like that, uh, like Quakers and yeah. Shakers driving flatbed trucks who can't find their way around. Right. Yeah, we got worse though. We got Mexicans here. <laughs> Those uh, see now. Here's the problem with the Mexicans, Drew. Uh, uninsured and uh, have had a few brushes with the law. Not looking for any trouble. These they're holding. You know. You know the guy went in front of me. Let me tell you the guy went in front of me. I want a guy with a few beers in him who's fully insured, who uh, whose dad knows like the chief of police. And who's uh, who just got a BJ and is riding high? You know what I mean? I want I want cocky. I want confident. I don't want scared and paranoid. That's the guy I get. All right. All right. Hey, let's talk about this movie, Drew. The new guy. I've seen this uh, commercial uh, at least fifteen hundred times. times. Yeah, funny. which is uh, nice. I like uh, when uh, the <laughs> rope gets lit underneath you. What is this? Uh, what is this new movie about? It's about a guy in high school who just sort of um, always dreams of being the guy, but everybody craps on him, so he just he can't take it anymore. So he he basically gets gets kicked out of his school and um, winds up getting sent to jail, where he meets Eddie Griffin, who sort of gives him a makeover and he transfers back to his new school with a bad reputation. <laughs> and, it, and it works. He Absolutely. finds love along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Goddamn Spider Man! <laughs> Screwing up your opening. Now, was it was last week your opening weekend? No, 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 no. This week is. Oh, this week is. Yeah. Oh, good. At least there's hope. Good, because I was thinking, yeah, geez, I don't know if we made the top twenty. Yeah, good. Let that Spider Man cool down. You know what drives me nuts about that Spider Man is? Where were all the Spider Man fans uh, three weeks ago? Right. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's getting in line now, and I'm talking to guys I've known for ten years. Tell me, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm going this weekend. I'm like, I haven't heard you mention Spider-Man your entire life. What do you mean you're going this? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. What is that? It's mm-hmm. brainwashing. People is that what it is? totally it's, brainwashed. Well, it's, it's mob mentality. Right. And is it, is it, Drew, what are you doing? I'm looking to see who's in the film. Isn't it, isn't it the sort of mentality of other people are going to be talking about it and I want to know what they're talking about? Like when I show up yeah. at the office on Monday... 
Herb and Lou are going to be talking about Spider-Man, and I don't want to be standing there plugging my ears saying, don't give it away. I mean, it's even working on us because we're talking about it right now. I mean, I'm telling you. Right. It's all over the place. I mean, Jan- wherever Janine Garofalo is, she's probably really upset because she's all into that four companies control what the whole world sees. Right. She's very angry. <laughs> she's uh, she's uh, laughing all the way to the bank. She's so angry. But here, here's the thing, too. And here's how these big movies work. There, there'll be a very strong urge, and I think it works on just about all of us, to go, you'll get caught up in the fervor of the whole thing, and that fervor will last about four days. Mm-hmm. If the movie opens on a Friday, wait a minute, my mic going? Yeah. If the movie opens on a Friday, you'll start feeling it about Wednesday, but if you can hold off and not go see that movie, and I'm not talking about the new guy, I'm talking about Spider-Man. It will subside by Monday or Tuesday of the following but, but week. part of the fun of movies is the whole mentality of being in a group. Right. and it's a right. communal and experience. Yeah. yeah, and then what happens to all those movies that are on pay-per-view now that I have no intention or desire to see that I really wanted to see the middle of the week before the end of the week that they came out on? You're not going to see them. I know, but isn't that, isn't that just a metaphor for life? <laughs> that you, you really had a boner for this movie. Like, you were thinking on a Wednesday, oh, man, I want to go see it on Friday, but uh, the line's going to be too long. Fast forward six months, you still haven't seen it. You're sitting home, it's on pay-per-view, and you're not going to spend the two ninety nine to see it. You have no desire at this point. Doesn't that make us shallow? Oh, of course. But, well, other things do, too. But I think we better go to the calls, Adam, because, like, three people have, like, died and fallen off the line at the time you've been on this diatribe, so. Mm. About the fast line? Yeah. Okay. They killed a couple of people, I think. Drew, you know my plan. My plan is to filibuster until everyone drops off, I, I can't, and then yeah. we go home. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you, you're right. Oh, well, yeah, your way. Yeah, We're getting yeah. very close to that. Yeah. I'm getting smart. <laughs> so yeah. DJ Qualls, the new guy, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. Brian. Brian. Yes, sir. You're 25. Sir. What's up, Dr. Drew? First of all, I want to tell you, I'm you know, a paramedic, so I absolutely respect you, everything, everything about you and everything you say. Right. Adam, you crack me up, man. Thank you. Absolutely crack me up. That's right, Drew. You hear that? Thank you. Absolutely (laughs) crack me up. Thank you. Got it. Um, Now, my my question is, it's, I guess, fairly simple, straight to the point. Uh, I've been dating the same girl for about a year. Uh, You know, a little history on that. Her, you know, we started seeing each other before she got a divorce. And, you know, it kind of got hairy there for a while. But anyways, um, I've been seeing her for about a year. About, you know, it, it, it was on again, off again. And we've been seeing each other for about, I guess, two weeks now. She got her own place and everything, you know, and I've, you know, she wants me to move in. I'm not ready for all that. Still have sex occasionally. And you, you know, it's like, it's right, it's right. She, you know, she'll, she'll go down on me and I won't, I guess, you know, you know, respond, you know, as far as, you know, you know, I'm getting hard. How about when you have sex? Any problems? Well, it, it won't even happen when we're having sex because, you know, it won't get to that point. But the strange thing is when I go down on her... It's like good times. You're in. You, know, you, know, you get an erection going down on her? Yeah, I don't know. It's shocking to you. I know it's a staggering, <laughs> startling idea. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> now that, I mean, you know, I'm not trying awesome. to shake sense into myself. <laughs> that is my technique for pleasuring. <laughs> 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 um, well, actually, now, now the other thing with her is, you know, maybe this part of the problem, she cannot have an orgasm vaginally, you know, you, you know through actual sex. It's oral inter- her, oral, oral sex only. Her, you know, her thing is is oral sex. All right, you know, All right. That, that's that's yeah. the right. Brian. That's most women actually that are in that category. Yeah. So there you go. Um, I need to know if he's on medication or anything. Uh, like his phone line is so crappy. Yeah, but he's the know, first guy I've ever heard. He can't get it up because she can't have an orgasm. No, he can't get it up because he can't get it up, and he starts with oral sex, and that's sort of surprising to him. But he gets it up when he's having oral, doing oral to her. Yep. Hey, yeah. Brian, you, are you on yeah. a medication? No, sir. Nothing. No. No, no medication. Um, Trust him. I don't know. I mean, I had it. I don't know. It's, it's stupid, but you know, I had like you know a little minor issue with. I had like a a boil under my my butt on my on, on my right leg, and Ooh. I was thinking maybe you know that has something to do with it, but it doesn't hurt me or anything anymore. I had a lance taken care of, and it's gone now. But yeah, no. You know, it, you know, it's kind of like you know one of those things now. I think where you know you know if somebody tells you don't think about pink elephants. Oh, oh absolutely, a- absolutely. And guys your age, that's the primary psychological reason that they get into trouble is they stumble once and now they're convinced it's going to happen again. And the anxiety caused by the thought of it possibly happening again is enough to make it happen again. Yeah, this is what happens to me when I get stoned and I eat and I think, how do I not bite my tongue? Uh, I got my tongue in there. I got a big peanut butter cookie in my mouth. 
my teeth are chomping away, and uh, usually within uh, three seconds, I bite my tongue. And Drew, yeah. you know, I know the problem with this show is I have, like, uh, ADD and I'm all over the place, but yeah. you're setting your mug down on the uh, countertop still. I, I, I took care of it, but listen, there's stuff all over the place here. I, I, yeah. Drew, you don't, you don't want to look into that at all, huh? Yeah, you don't want to look into this part, this thing, I'm, the countertop, now that you got your big carpet sample there? Yes, and I guarantee you at times I will still miss this thing. It just will happen. It will happen. That there's a lot of this stuff on this thing, and occasionally I will think and put it down. All right. You should think That's about right. that. Yeah, I'll, probably, I'll try to you pay attention. You should really to think it. about it. No, if on yeah, a psychological no, level. No. Psychologically. Mm, no, uh, you're not going to think about no, it. No, I'll be happy to think about All it. All right. These you things, have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Uh, yeah, I do. But these things, if they don't bother you, then you have to pay attention. To be All right, let me just say this. Let me just stop this, the show for this a second. Will, this will not this. make it happen. Do you understand, everybody? Drew has been setting his coffee mug down on the hard counter, making a noise and driving me nuts for five years. Five years he's been doing this, right? right? So we got a pad. We talk about it every night. But you would never, like, dream of getting, like, a scratch pad or something, something, a magazine, anything, piece of folded paper, and sending it down on top of that. That, that would, would never happen. That would never happen. That, not in five years. No. No. There's, no, there's, there's nothing. There's not a, a paper cup that's been mashed down and flattened Because down. The, the problem nothing. is here. See, I do this during a lecture. During there, a there, and there's he, hear, nothing. he hears this like it's like, you a, sent it's the coffee like pounding right. in his head. Here's the deal. But everyone so, just listen. Listen to the evilness that is Dr. Drew. Right. Do you get high before you come to work? Or are, sen- are your like, senses really sort of no, cr- crazy no. out of control? Yeah, it's weird, <laughs> yeah right? I very... I hate Be careful, that Coke can you got in that can, no, cup. You've got to be very careful. It. Be very careful. I'll get no, the beat the, down the, before the, I walk out of here. The guests, the guests can do what they like, Drew. It's you. It's Drew's got to remember to do is he got to remember to move this stuff here. Right. At the but beginning. Drew has been saying the reason he puts the thing down on like that is because uh, he does not have my little piece of carpet sample that I use and put my mug down on. Which we do now have. Now he has it. But it was covered with books. But he's still books. setting it on covered the... covered with books. All right. And true. so we got to make him put the books in. All right. So all that's right. the main thing. All right. Yeah, I'm just saying. The thing. you got to look into that. That's all I'm saying. All right. Are we done with that guy? Uh, yeah. All right. Ben? Yeah. You're 16? Yes. What's up? Yeah, um, I'm 16, as you said, and I'm gay. And me and my friends have had arguments over whether or not it's a choice. And I want to know if there's any, like, proof of whether it is or isn't. O- o- over the choice? Yes. Yeah, there's no way there's a choice involved. No, in there's this. a choice, but it's not your choice. It's one <laughs> guy. Yeah. There's no way. He lives in uh, Louisiana, and he decides who's gay <laughs> well, and who isn't. Yeah, I've yeah. seen the book. It's the equivalent I to... I had to go get my name out of it once. ...to choosing what you consider to be attractive. Those are just things that are, are in you. They're part of you. And the, the, the question, that the only thing that is debated is whether there are environmental factors that produce this and how important are they relative to genetic factors that that's all that's open for debate no one no one considers it any kind of some sort of cognitive choice like hmm should i eat grapes well, or well, no, or once in a while some real right winger will will label it that I don't you, you have much. to be not, not much i'm just saying you have to be ultra right wing and you have to be a little bit thick you, you know be sort of bible literalist type yeah, they still say it's a choice, right? Th- those those folks, yeah, do. yeah, like Falwell and all those other guys. They say, yeah, I mean, I mean real yeah, but right they're idiots. Wingers. Look at the people who are saying that it's a choice. But why yeah, do people well, people who want who who have this impulse want to choose otherwise? In fact, they do choose otherwise and try and attempt to hide this and to suppress it, and it ends up being a disaster for more than just themselves. Well, it, it's it's sort of a um, to me, it's one of those ridiculous arguments. It's like a when women complain, uh, how come, uh, why do men get to be the ones who are in power? Because so, <laughs> we're in power, bitch. <laughs> well, what do you mean? <laughs> how come? You you think this is a conspiracy? Well, if you guys were smarter than we were, wouldn't you be in power? How is it that you're so much smarter, but we're in power? You can't argue with it. We're in power. We're in power. You're gay. You're gay. You're blowing a guy. You're blowing a guy. You know what I mean? It's like, well, did he decide to do it, or did God make him do it, or is there some evil genetic force? Well, who cares? He's got a penis in his mouth. Do we really have to dissect it? I mean, do you really think you could not want to do that, or biologically not not be prone to do it, and then somehow just force yourself to do it against your own will somehow? I mean, what are we saying, ultimately, when you break it down? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That you you would choose it like the color of shirt you would choose. You know that this is some sort of like casual choice. No, 
No, it's just, it is. For although, certain, although, interestingly for women, it is somewhat of a choice. That, uh, enough. that may be true. Ben? Yeah. You're not a woman, are you? No. All right, you're fine then. Okay. All right, so you're gay, and uh, that's fine. Uh, how, well, what, what, well, go ahead. It's just that my friends, they like tell me that it's a choice, and I tell them no, it isn't, because I never had that choice. I don't like them saying that it is when they don't know. I know, hey, but... tell them you'd choose to do otherwise if you could. Well, so what? Right? So what if, So what if it was a yeah, choice? Yeah, I get with girls, but I get sick when I get with girls. Yeah, me, with them. yeah me too. Mm. I well, it's them to get sick. Well, oh, oh, no, that's right. Did yeah. I say me? Yeah. I meant them. Ben? Yeah. Uh, just d- don't even get into the argument with them. It, it's really a, a moot point, as they say. Okay. All right? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I mean, look, I, I know I'm not, I'm not making the most sense in the world, but do you know what I mean about the choice, choice part? Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm getting too philosophical here, but they think of it as making a choice like like we would make a choice like exactly it's like the, the same thing applies to alcoholism and addiction people want to say that's a choice too yeah it, yeah it was a choice when they decided to take their first yeah but it's of, not a di- being gay is not a disease though i mean it's no i understand but they, they, they again these are things i'm I'm, I'm bringing it up only in the context of people alleging that things that people can't control or right. choose that way or under their willful influence and but, it, but it's like, just unenlightened. It's foolish. But like, it's, what's in it for you just to decide to start having sex with guys? Right. It it, it suggests that well, you're kind of into chicks, like like we are, like we are. But we're going to decide to make a hellish life for ourselves, you know, riddled with a hepatitis AIDS and um, and and um, and being ostracized by our family and peers and society, and just start hanging with dudes. Good times. Good, yeah, good times. I totally good almost times. said that. Good times. <laughs> Larry? Hey, what's up? You're 20. What's up? Hey, wh- hey, what's going on, Adam? What are you doing, man? I'm just um, yelling at Drew. Oh, really? Okay, that's cool, man. But, uh, hey, yo, man, how long does, um, this for Dr. Drew, mm-hmm. how long does, like, marijuana stay in your blood system? And your blood system can stay in there for many weeks, many months, even. Really? I thought it was ha- in the fan. It can be slowly released into the blood, but the, if you're asking how long is it detectable in the urine, which I think what you're interested in, no, they're going to do the blood thing on me or something. Well, it's even less. It's even less likely to be detected in the blood. It but, is. Yeah, but it's a long time in the hair test, right? Yeah, but the hair test is very difficult to interpret. It's, but in the blood, do you think it'll show up or anything? Oh, well, how long could you smoke? Um, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and I've been taking like niacin and drinking a lot of water and doing all this. You know, don't lose weight and don't exercise because if it gets if you have you heavy guy. No, I'm I'm like um five three, like a hundred pounds. All right, because the stuff can get mobilized from your fat tissue, and that's Jesus. where it's stored right now. So. But it, 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 you, you, you could, be, could crush you. Or really are you, you applying for a, like a jockey <laughs> yeah, position? He's or? been looking for a guy whose ass he can kick for years. Come now. on down to the studio. Yeah, buddy. You want a piece of uh, the big man? <laughs> so, so you think that will be, be all cool? Like after like thirty days? Oh yeah, I think it'll be fine. Uh, it'll be all cool, right? What yeah. kind of job are you looking for? Um. Actually, I'm not looking for any job. It's just like a government test or something, something like that. Oh, a little parole work? Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, all right, buddy. There we go. <laughs> He's playing it stupid. Dude, if you're on parole, don't smoke pot until you're off. My God. And tell other people it's for a job. <laughs> <laughs> I like people, they, they do that bad lying math. Is, is it for a job? No, it's not for a job. Now, they don't realize. See, when you're dumb, you don't realize there's a follow-up to that. Yeah. You're taking a drug test. It's not for a job. There's a follow-up. What is it for? Oh, uh, it's just some it's just some government thing. You know, the Census Bureau. They're they're coming they, by. they come to the door. Yeah. You never know when some guy's going to come by and want some urine. <laughs> and blood. This <laughs> case. And some blood. All right. All right. What do you want to do? You want to talk to one more guy? Yeah, real quick. Andrew? 21? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, what's up? Uh, I'm just calling up. I was adopted uh, when, I, when I was born, and I, I was just wondering, I kind of put off searching for my birth parents for, till now, but I've always known that I've ado- I was adopted. What, well, the, what is this going to do for you? What do you, what do you tend to accomplish? Uh, I just wanted to know who it was, you know, who, who my biological parents are. Right. So I know kind of the city they're from, and it's not really something that I'm, I didn't want it to be that I'm searching for something that's missing. I'm all right with my folks. I'm fine in school, and I have a good future. I just wanted to know who it was. It's not like something that I'm trying to do to make up for something else. Can't you just find out who it is and sort of read about them or find out some details about them without going to meet them? 
It's an interesting well, yeah, point. Well, yeah, by the same thing. Well, well, are they? They're probably not together, right? Well, yeah, no, probably not. I'm just saying that. What's to the find question? Out who they were without me? Do you think it's a good idea? Well, I don't think it's a. a here's the. Here's the thing. You, you have about a 95 percent chance of being disappointed. Yeah, but, but then again, he's not—he's not looking for anything. He's just—I I know. But yeah, when, but when you go looking for your birth parents, there's going to be some expectations there, and you have to—you have to brace yourself yes. for the fact that number one, they could be crackheads, and number two, they—they they may not be happy to see you, and that's—I mean, that sort of hurts, but it's true. Or yeah. they could be like my parents. Oh my God! Which is even—even even worse than crackheads, which is no color at all. <laughs> even a crackhead's got a little personality. They're clear. Yeah, you could have my parents where you just knock on the door and be like, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do, Dad? Tell me about yourself. Well, I have no hobbies. <laughs> uh, I don't follow any football teams. I don't do anything. I like to walk at a very slow pace, take a nap, and uh, listen to a little classical yeah. music. And uh, read so, books. So, are we done, son? That's my life. Yeah. Uh, um, be, uh, be gone with you. Enjoy. Bye. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you could definitely do a little leg work, but be prepared for almost nothing. Yeah, I, I think that for different types of abortions, they won't let you, uh, I mean, adoptions, they won't let you look back. I mean, in some cases, they, right. they just will be blocked. Well, if, if if that, I'll tell you what, Andrew. If it's blocked, I don't want to know about okay, it. Okay, right. if it's blocked, then you just we'll leave it be, yeah. look at that as a, uh, a sign. sign and move on. But here, here's what I really think you're going to find. You're going to find what what is going on, what goes on in most parts of the country with most people in the country. It's a sort of uneventful semi-crappy life where there's you know, I you know, I got pregnant, I was a little too young and then anyway, but now uh, I co-manage this Hallmark store in the in the uh, in the crap mall up on S Street over there and... Uh, well, maybe you'll find out that his parents were like really rich now and he's had some now. huge right, DJ, fortune. That's it. Now he's going, <laughs> he's going on a search. It's never going to happen. Always going to be bad. Yeah, yeah, it just pretty much has to be. You know what it is? You know why? It, it, it's like it's like when you hook up with guys you went to high school with and you start talking to them. And Drew, not your school, not the little Lord Fauntleroy school for <laughs> albino hemophiliacs. But like my school, North Hollywood High. I mean, a man's school. And you run into the guy, and he's put on 30 pounds, and he's balding, and he's talking to you about he's in the middle of a divorce, and then he starts talking to you about a divorce, and you say, I thought you were divorced. Oh, that was my first divorce. And he's got two kids and two stepkids, and his business was good at some point, but it's not doing too good now. And he's got some plan about doing something, but it's not going to come together. And you just kind of look at him, and you just think, Maybe you should just kill yourself. You, so we don't have to see you at the next reunion. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's disappointing. It'd be, you'd, you'd be better if they were just uh, on death row. I don't know, Adam. Sometimes those guys can pull out of those tailspins. No. I know one that had made $0 in 1988, 1991, and 1994. Zero. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. DJ Qualls is our guest tonight. The New Guys, the movie, opening up uh, May 10th this Friday. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Nice. DJ Qualls is our guest tonight. The new movie is called uh, The New Guy. That is out on uh, May 10th, coming up uh, this Friday. DJ is from uh, Nashville, or 80 miles outside of Nashville. Yeah. And uh, mentioned that uh, his town produces caskets and pajamas. We had a big True. conversation about caskets last time he was in here. That yeah. sounds you, familiar. You work in yeah. a casket shop or something? No, I actually made pajamas. Okay. Yeah. He went the pajama route. Right. I did have a casket question for uh, you, Andrew, and maybe between the two of you, someone can answer it. Uh, I was gotten a little debate or argument with some guys at the man show the other day, which is, you know, the thing about caskets is, when we all decided the open casket thing was a very bizarre ritual. Yeah. That, I don't know, that never looked better yeah. or still looks like he's alive. Or let's put some rouge on the 85-year-old guy <laughs> who crapped himself when he died. Very strange, strange, strange ritual. It is really, it is the human primate going up and sniffing and touching the dead body. It really is what it is. The, that it needs to make the, it real. Yeah, that whole, that whole sort of thinking, which is one last look before we put him in the ground, but 
what about one last look when he's alive? You, no, you know no, what no, I mean? But you don't know when that's coming, no, so no, humans, it's, humans it's a way to get closure. He, no, it's not closure. Humans need to really see and and feel and touch. Well, and Drew, Drew says they don't believe the person's dead. Exactly. I, they, in, I take in a how primitive is that way. Possible? In a primitive way. In a primitive way. Not, That's what closure is, really I accepting know, listen, that it's I, Listen, Quincy comes up to me and says, uh, Grandpa kicked off. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand that very, very well. Now, my, my cheap ass family was uh, Neptune Society. Some guy comes in with a. With a uh, it was really like a country squire station wagon from 1978. Throws Grandpa on the back. You never see him again. I swear to Christ, you 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 take their word. You take their word that uh, they cremated him and dumped him out in the ocean. But you never know. We never even had anything. Do you, you understand that? Oh, that is a Corolla trait. Do you, do you understand the Corollas? You want to know the core of the Corollas? Grandpa got picked up, and Grandpa got taken out, and we never saw him again, and we never had a funeral. We never, we didn't even have a brunch. We had a little gathering two years, two, two years later. Mm. Two years later, we had a little, little gathering, but nothing, nothing, nothing for two years. Maybe because they couldn't see the body, they didn't really believe he was dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believed it. No, and we liked him. That was one of the guys we liked in our family. Don't wait till you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to put like an M80 under me and just uh, leave me out. Whatever whatever thing the M80 doesn't get, maybe a cat will get or something like that. Put me out in the yard. But now do they have, so the open casket's a weird thing, but yeah. here was the question. Do they have a latch that keeps the casket lid shut? You assume from they the do. From the inside, you mean? No, not from the inside. I mean, something, that's, something that can't be opened back up? You no, not from the inside. What like a lock. The inside? Yeah, what do you look? What do you mean? You a latch uh, on the inside that you can't open? Oh, it back hold up on. Where's Where's the inside part coming from, Drew? That you can't unlock it on the outside. Well, how would the latch on the inside work? I mean, the deceased would lock it. No. <laughs> what are you talking about then? All right, <laughs> Drew. We're having a tough night. A latch on the inside. What do you mean? I'm sure. I bet there is. They come in all types. Like every option you want is like buying a car. Right. Like if you want the certain kind of lining, if you want the certain kind of like. Well, that on that it. part I understand, but I never see the hasp or the latch or the whatever on a casket that's going to keep the lid closed. Right, you never see the mortician like with his keys, like because they're on the, the inside. Because you obviously don't see them. Nobody sees those things. So you're talking about something that latches down once the thing is closed. You mean on the edge, somewhere in that can't be seen or or. Reach from right. the outside. It's like a hidden clasp thing. Now, how would you undo it then? That's an interesting question. You wouldn't once you close. That's what I would ask. Is once you close it, is that it? Pound no, it's no, it no, can't, th- can't happen. No, because the, true. Because if, if it fell, if it fell, fell down, fell down in the middle yeah. of the funeral, yeah. Yeah. that would suck. Because people wouldn't. No, have to, here's all I'm saying. Somehow you got to shut that thing because some Paul Bear is going to trip on his rented his rented tuck shoes or something and one, someone's going to come rolling out of a casket. Do you, if, you know if, what I'm if saying? If it reopens. I mean, they, I think they seal them before. There's something in the, that you can seal it before you put oh, it Oh, maybe they the, just put like a strap over it or something. You never see the lock or anything. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe outside. that's bad luck. I'd like, if anyone uh, designs caskets, I'd like to hear from that. Maybe, maybe it's, close, maybe it's no like, like, a, like a cabbie push down and it pops up. <laughs> <laughs> Like a like a cup cup holder in your car right, or something. Right, exactly. Brian, hey, what's up? Do they have uh, casket cup holders? Uh, not where I'm from, but okay. our, it doesn't matter because all the cups are too big for them anyway. So, oh, for the casket cup holders. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So um, all right, I wanted to ask a question because I was reading the TV guide the other day, and they were cheers to the Osbournes for you know. You can tell that there's really love in that family. Oh, huh. And they do it with the Simpsons, and they do it with Married with Children. You know, They did it. I don't know if they did or not, but it seems like that's they keep on going, you know. It doesn't matter that their parenting style is so, you know, crazy and eclectic. It's like, but, you know, you can tell that they love their kids. But in the meantime, I'm thinking, like, I don't know, whenever I see an episode of the Osbournes, and I certainly don't want to badmouth Ozzy, but it seems like his kids are kind of... Jer- mean, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, there was an episode where Jack was, like, throwing rocks at kids and stuff, and I was like, that's not acceptable at all. And then Ozzy was, he wasn't really able to do anything, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, if his kids were cussing in preschool around my kids, I wouldn't appreciate that at all. Mm. all right. It's a kind of interesting question is why are we so drawn to the Simpsons and Married with Children and the Osbournes? What, what do we get out of that? 
And I don't think anyone thinks that it's a good parenting or that they would deny that his Ozzy's kids are affected by Ozzy and Sharon's parenting stuff, issues. But we're drawn to it. That's really the question. Why do we go to it? Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that the question really? Well, about? it's it's sort of compelling. I mean, it's hard to look away. But why do we go to the Simpsons? I mean, no one thinks Bart's a great guy. But we're, we're drawn to it. We're, well, I, I think in this day and age, parents that are together and raising their kids, even even if it's unconventionally, get uh, get a higher score than most. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and we have always been big fans as a society of people who sort of achieved results in unconventional ways. Right. Like like here here's what I mean. Like in school. We're much more drawn to the guy who parties, has a good time, and still pulls off an A, mm. rather than the guy who stays up all weekend studying and gets an A. That guy's, we don't gravitate toward that guy. People, There's, you know, we people like agree? to see young people doing bad things and getting away with it. Like, if you look at almost every movie, young people doing bad things, getting away with it, or things that they couldn't get away with. But also, I mean, I have to question, like, I mean, it's a 15 and a 17-year-old on television. Obviously, they're going to... I mean, there are cameras around it, and they're aware that there are cameras around, so you have to think... I mean, I think a lot of that, like Jack throwing rocks at people and coming out dressed like the military guy, mm -hmm. he knows he's on TV. Well, I would, uh, I would definitely say there's got to be an element of that. And it's funny because we... Uh, it's an interesting point DJ brings up because in all these shows, there's so many sort of hidden camera shows or you know real world type shows where it's not a hidden camera but you're supposed to ignore it mm -hmm. and we sort of think as viewers it's either game on or game off that either they're aware the camera's there and they're doing a sitcom or the camera's there but they're just carrying on right, right. but let's face it yeah it's a good point you are aware the camera's there someone tells you don't look at it don't talk to it but yeah drew if we were having an argument let's say mm -hmm. and i knew there was a guy with a camera standing right next to us it might be a more spirited argument yeah than it would normally be if right. there wasn't a guy with a camera there right and so therefore there's probably some acting going on and uh, i think dj Qualls is right but it, it's interesting we're drawn to this stuff and uh yeah i think we enjoy seeing people struggle well, it's a good you know, we, we enjoy human beings who seem to be good and seem to care Struggling. Well, look, it makes us feel good about our own struggles. There's nothing. There's nothing better than a guy who has tons of platinum records, tons of money, and legions of fans, and who's so, supposed to be sort of the prince of darkness, <laughs> getting his ass kicked around by a lamp dog at home. You know, what I mean, we love that that's, as human beings. That's comedy. Yeah, right? that's, that's that's comedy. That's it's, comedy. It's, it's it's the six eight. 350 pound all star football player whose mom grabs him by the ear and drags him back into the house, kind of thing. Yeah. We, we've always loved that, and that's kind of what this is, wouldn't you say? Yep. All right. So, Sean? Hey. You're 15? Yeah. Smoke uh, a little pot? Oh, quite a bit. No, no. Oh, actually. Sean, please. No, seriously, dude. Well, what have you been doing? Uh, just, uh, <laughs> Ironically, works the dude in <laughs> to the Seriously. not smoking the pot. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Seriously, brother. <laughs> what have you been doing? You've been doing something. Drinking. This, <laughs> like, oh, I used to a lot since I was like eight years old. Drinking since you were eight? Yeah, I went like like religious functions where they'd have like the little things that you'd go around and pass around. And, I don't know, I just started drinking a lot of it and... Uh, so I decided I liked getting drunk and just kept doing it. Mm. No one I, noticed? What? No one noticed you were doing this? Not really. I'd just go sit off in a corner and uh, down them and then just go back and... But wouldn't anyone, your parents, notice that you were intoxicated? No, nah, well, they weren't really there that much. Like, I wouldn't really see them much at all that, for the rest of that night, usually. And you kept on drinking? At age eight, yeah. you, could, you could keep that from your parents that you were intoxicated yeah they I don't know it speaks volumes about their parenting I'm afraid <laughs> yes um, yeah well I guess yeah so now what but uh so this year I ended up stopping like four months ago or so I ended up quitting cool mm -hmm. and um I've just been getting extremely depressed because of it I think and uh well I'll tell you what any alcoholic that stops drinking but doesn't do something to replace that gets depressed. I've never met one that didn't. 
And that's really where recovery steps in. Is it's about dealing with mood and anxiety. And if you don't have another mechanism to deal with it, it's gonna it's gonna run out of control. So what should you do? H- how about going to AA? Like, is there any way to do that anonymously or any way? <laughs> well, the, the, the anonymous word. right there in the name. It, it is anonymous. That's yeah. the wrong word, but uh, it's ironic that he used the word anonymous. Yeah, like, you can call them in the phone book. They'll come pick you up, take you to a meeting. No one need know about it. All right. All right, there, buddy. And then, if, if not, really, you're 15. It might be worthwhile seeing a psychiatrist. I mean, but you can, can you advocate like a 15 year old going to AA without his parents knowing? I mean, going out of the house to, you know what I mean, going places that his parents do, they don't know where he's going. This, I normally, of course, that would be an appropriate thing, but his parents sat by when he got loaded when he was eight. I mean, how much? Yeah, and, and he's afraid sort to have of them, uh, uh, damage control here. This is this is he needs to get himself involved in some treatment. Then he needs to get his. What will happen is in recovery, people will give him the sufficient uh, direction and strength to be able to stand up. Say, I need more. I need help. I need you to participate. And uh, I don't. I don't think if you put the cart before the horse, they'll get anywhere because the, those are not parents that are likely to be uh, understanding of this. What do you mean if you put the cart before the horse? In other words, if he, you say, hey, Sean, go tell your parents you're an alcoholic and you want to go to AA and you want a therapist, yeah. and they're going to go, no, you're, no not relax, right. you're not. They're not our son, no. Right. And they gonna, could, could suppress the momentum he has to take care of himself. Right. What would your parents have done, Drew? 15. What do you think they would have done? Um, jumped off the bridge. Really? Probably, yeah. They wouldn't, wouldn't have, they would have been upset by it? <laughs> what? I mean, very upset. Oh, yeah. Would they have taken it out on you? Would they have let you go to uh, AA or a therapist? God, it's hard to know. Yeah. Hard to know that would have reacted. Your dad want to know how much, <laughs> right? Then you tell him, uh, AA is free. Ah, oh, yeah. You let him go five days a week. Sure. Then he tried to figure out a way to start charging people for going, right? Relax. <laughs> okay. We'll take a little break. Here's, here's something that's not in the index like anymore. At ease. At ease. <laughs> <laughs> At ease got, uh, yeah, got replaced by Stand down and back off. Back off. I think. All right, we'll take uh, take a little break, and we'll be right back. Yo ho ho, love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Doctor Drew. <laughs> Yo ho ho. <laughs> wow. I gotta keep it fresh. At ease. At ease, soldier. DJ Qualls is our guest tonight. He's uh, got himself a little movie called uh, The New Guy. You've seen the commercials. It is uh, going to be out uh, this Friday, May 10th. And uh, you know DJ from uh, Road Trip. And uh, got a few new movies uh, coming out in the fall. Lone Star State of Mind with uh, Josh Jackson and uh, The Core opposite uh, Hilary Swank. What's, uh, what's The Core? You know, it's one of those sort of like Armageddon blockbuster type of movies where the world's blowing up and we have to save it. Really? Yeah. You and Hillary? Yeah, me, Hillary, and Alfrey Woodard and a whole bunch of Aaron Eckhart. Big cast. Wow. Yeah. Why is the world blowing up? Um, basically, the government did some sort of seismic weapons testing and they've stopped the Earth's core. <laughs> or they're, it's slowed down, so we're all going to fly off the <laughs> Earth. And Oh, you mean the Earth's going to stop rotating? Well, our gravity is going to be all screwed up. and I see. You know. Bad I mean, times. Right, it's bad. Well, the man did it again. Yeah. Oh, man. Right. A bunch of, bunch of white guys in their uh, 50s who are saying, uh, we need to do this. White shirts with skinny black ties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the man destroying the earth again. Well, listen, I, uh, I love these kind of movies, by the way. I was... Uh, I was I was down with Independence Day, and I was uh, down with Armageddon. Very much like that. There's this scene where Mexico City gets destroyed by lightning, and it's amazing. Yeah. And Chicago gets microwaved by this huge cloud of steam that comes up from the core. It's really neat. I mean, it's not sort of like your cheesy journey to the center of the earth. Oh, so the core, the core is like the core of the earth. Yeah. The core is coming out to get you. You got it. You you got to save. You got to save it. Right. right? I actually do save the world. I'm a hooker with a heart of gold. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> see this this is what we're talking about we like pe- human beings who are struggling right you seem good right yeah kylie yeah you're 15 yeah what's up well in my vagina area i'm numb i have absolutely no feeling at all hmm. me this too is, this is a new thing no i've had it for my entire life again Adam, that's what they say to you that's not what you experience you know what i'm saying no, I'm saying my vagina is no. Oh, I thought you said when you're, when no. you're with someone, they tell you that. No. Um, 
I'm sorry, is it, it's not a new thing? No, it's been like that my entire life. Yeah, that's and probably, could be a bad thing. Well, yeah, if, if it's truly an anesthetic experience, one of the places I run into that with patients is when they've been sexually abused. No, I haven't. Nothing been like that around? Abused in any way or anything. And have, have mm -hmm. you been okay neurologically, no back injuries or neck injuries, no. anything like that? And by numb, what, what do you mean? You cannot feel touch? Nothing at all. No touch, no nothing. I what if I put a cigarette out on it? Would you know it? I wouldn't be able to feel it. Have you ever thought about seeing a neurologist to make sure it does? Well, is, I have a pap on the 21st of this month. Definitely talk to them about that. You don't do a lot of bicycling or, or uh, mm -mm. spinning or anything like that? How old are you? 15. So, really, if I put a cigarette out on your vagina... Or stabbed with a needle, yeah. I wouldn't be able to feel it. And is it is it extend all the way to your thigh in your buttock area or where no, where is it's just my vagina. Just inside. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on a second. Is there something about her attitude that you find bothersome, or is it oh. just me? I would be panicked if I couldn't feel my penis, and if I was fifteen years old and I I was it's numb. Yeah, but I, I think I'd maybe, be panicked if I couldn't feel DJ Qualls' penis <laughs> either. In fact, you are, seem to be in a panic right now. Uh, <laughs> His eyes are huge. <laughs> Hold on. Well, uh, yeah. There's something up with Kylie, though. Well, you know, from just an attitude yeah, There's something point. up there. I I'm wonder I'm that the history is maybe more than she's letting on. And then she hasn't said there's no feeling on the outside. Maybe, maybe she has clitoral sensation, but not inside feeling. She mm -hmm. keeps saying my vagina, my vagina. Maybe she doesn't know what she's describing. But is it possible for just a part of your body to go numb? Actually, I have a... Right where my hip bone is on the right mm -hmm. side... I'm numb there. Show me. Like right here. I can't yeah, that's feel that's a there. classic. If there's a it nerve is. that comes through the tensor fascia a lot. Can I put a cigarette out there? Gets, it's usually, I wouldn't recommend what's, it. What's, what's comical, what's novelty about DJ Qualls, it's usually very, very obese people get that because the pressure on the, on the fascia a lot. That is the comedy. The I'm a walking yeah. <laughs> side gag. Well, he's, he's getting up around 115. <laughs> yeah, after <laughs> I probably put on like three pounds since the last time I saw you. Uh, let's talk uh, uh, back to Kylie. Yeah. Kylie? How's everything else in your life going? Good. And uh, do you uh, you like you like men? Yeah. Do you have a feeling outside your vagina? No. Do you so like where does the numbness extend? Well, I mean, I can feel like my legs and everything, you know, like in that area, and I can feel my butt, but it's just that certain area that I wish was had feeling. It doesn't. Hmm. So if you put your finger inside of yourself, would you be able to feel that? Mm, I can't even feel it, like when putting a tampon in or okay. anything. Okay, all right. Mm. And you sure you've not been sexually abused or m yeah. manipulated in some way when you're growing up? Something. I'm happened. pretty sure. Uh -oh. Well, you like your dad? Well, he's yeah, he's okay. What's well, wrong with him? Well, he was hit in the head with an axe when he was like a teenager. So the doctor said he'd be mentally like a child in his entire life. This guy but couldn't take an axe hit. Yeah, well... It well, was, how do you know he didn't manipulate your genitalia when you were a little kid if he was that impaired? He gets really grossed out hearing about that kind of stuff, so I don't think he'd ever do that. Anymore. What do you I mean was, he got hit in the head with an axe when he was a well, kid? It didn't... It, didn't it, it, it only affected the... Like, a certain part of his brain didn't kill him. It wasn't didn't go in that deep into his brain. Right, I know he's alive. That's how he had you, because he was yeah. a kid when he got hit with the axe, but... Yeah. What's he? Uh, what's he do for a living? Is he able to work? He's actually lawyer. He's on his butt all day playing video games. So he's disabled. No, he he's just lazy. Did he? He but how does he earn money? How does he what? Earn money. Whenever he needs it, he goes out and finds a job and then quits it. Where's your mom? In her room. Does she work uh, herself? She works at Boeing. She, um, designs the planes and the computers. She works at Boeing. Oh, so she makes enough to support them both. Wow. Okay. And uh, does your dad drink? Uh-uh. Smoke pot? No. Okay. Uh, any uh, any older brothers or... Uh, I'm the oldest. No crazy uncles floating around? Well... What about I his do, older... I don't, I don't have any connection with any of my family. Why? Why not? Well, they're all bad, so my parents kind of just kept me away from them. What do you mean they're bad? Well, like... Drug addicts and molesters and whatnot. Oh, molesters. Well, see, again, we're very suspicious something happened to you. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But talk to your doctor or your gynecologist when you have a pap smear <clears throat> done. And, and uh, maybe there's some evidence of this. I mean, collect some data. It is possible to completely block out 
being molested and not being able to remember at all? Absolutely. But what happens is there's a physiologic imprint left behind, even though there's no memory. I mean, particularly before there's procedural memories, like before the age of three, there's no capacity for the brain to put in real memories. But there may be weird kind of dreams and sort of images that they remember or nothing. But the body has a, a, a imprint physiologically, and one of the things we sometimes see is women lose their sensation below the waist. Yeah, so I mean, listen, arousal. if something happens to you as an infant, you're probably not going to remember it. Oh, no. But your body may remember it. And, that, that and is that's that, pretty much what... I mean, we're speculating here that something happened when she was a year old. That's right. Not eight years old. That's right. That's, that's, right. Uh, that's And you got the drug addict molesters... Lurking around. ...in the family yeah. right there, yeah. and... Uh, Dad, who I picture uh, like wearing a wind-up beanie, yeah. with actually the axe still hanging out of his head. Yeah, like a Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> I know several people who have who have axe injuries to their heads. That's good. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear more. But they aren't they aren't uh, retarded. DJ Qualls is uh, here, and uh, he'll tell us about the axe injuries after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. DJ Qualls is our guest tonight. You uh, probably remember him from uh, Road Trip. I'm guessing you do. I'm guessing a lot of our audience uh, saw that movie. The New Guy is the uh, new movie. It is out uh, this Friday, May 10th, and uh, looks good. I mean, uh, I've not read any reviews, but uh, the commercials are funny. It's funny. And... uh, (gasps) What? God, it was two years ago when you were last here? Yeah, can you believe it? No. That is wild. That is an outrage. All right. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. I was so nervous the first time I did this show. I, I was gagging all the way here. No. Yeah, I remember. God, that, um, that's more of an outrage. I can't believe that. Hey, really? he, got, he got here really early, and he was just sitting on the couch out there, with like staring at his feet. Yeah. Tonight yeah. or last time? No, last yeah, time. I, I remember was... thinking, is this guy all right? <laughs> yeah. Now he's pissed that he has to do this show. <laughs> yeah, like, what the <laughs> Yeah, and, oh, and you, thought he was, you thought he was going to be black, Adam, remember that? <laughs> yeah. Well, look, you put DJ in front of Wittenberg, I think it's going to be a and, black guy. No, but do you remember, like, it was my name was DJ, and also I'd been in the sequel to Roots, and I had a black comedy coming out, and you're oh, like, he this said guy's that. black. Yeah, and so I've told that story like a million times, and I was like, well, that Adam Carolla is such a racist. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, a guy's named DJ Qualls, and he was in the sequel to Roots. <laughs> That was the white guy. I mean, you're doing the math. You're playing the odds, are you not? Okay. All right. Let's uh, talk to uh, Joe, who's uh, 23. Joe? How you doing? Good. Good. Are you there? Yeah, we're here. That's okay. right. That's the uh, part where I said good. And part where you talk. Okay, That's here's right. the deal. I was... <clears throat> I met this girl probably about two and a half years ago because I was dating one of her friends from her high school. And she was, now, what was her friend's name? Pardon? Drew, come on, don't, don't oh, talk. What, yeah, what was go. her friend's name? Go ahead, buddy. Okay, I was dating this girl for a long time. She had a friend. that We had hung out with her, her friend and her boyfriend a couple times. And that's all I pretty much knew of her. Anyway, she ended up breaking up with her, with her boyfriend. I ended up breaking up with my girlfriend. And it turned out that her and I saw one day... Because we have a mutual friend that lives here in the same you, complex. You see how I asked that there. question? A lot of friends. And yeah, it is, this, we're not, the, the, the okay, question I'm has nothing to, to do with any of this. Okay. All right. You had a girlfriend. We got that. We got For a girlfriend. A okay. Dating her. She's, yep. she's good. rad. All right, good. Like, got I shouldn't that. even be upset about this. But anyway, her, she invited me with a friend of hers and the company that she, that she works for to go to Palm Springs for the weekend. Anyway, I thought, okay, great. We're staying in some huge, nice resort. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be off the hook. And everything, you know, everything's paid for and all that stuff. And I was like, all right, you know, great. Mm-hmm. Ended up going and fully embarrassed her, embarrassed like her friends and everybody around me just made a total idiot of myself, I guess. Because, I mean, I went there and was drinking from, you know, the minute I woke up till the minute I passed out, which was a bad deal. But she's, I don't, and I don't know why I'm upset about this because I only dated her for about a month. And, well, it's no, it's no fun to be humiliated, right? But I am. No, it's no fun to be humiliated, and it's not of my character to act like that and do something like that. Really? 
<laughs> Come on, Drew. All right. Um, so. Well, there is, I mean, I, I don't mean that in really even a negative way. I, you, you seem a little sort of manic to me, like hypomanic. No, I'm just nervous because I'm, cause I'm on this radio. Okay. And I called here once before, like two weeks ago, All to right. ask a different question, and I didn't get on the air. So yeah. I was, called a couple of my friends, asked a buddy to record it, and it's, a, you know, it's an interesting moment for me. Okay, well... Um, I'm having a surreal and I, moment. And I called this girl, Adam. I called the girl and I told her, I said, hey, I'm going to be on the radio. Listen to Love Line. It's yeah. going to be funny, you know. And uh, I know she's highly pissed. She probably thinks I'm an idiot. And I was the nicest guy for the months before this. All right, time. all right. So what's the question? What should I do? Just leave it alone or? Well, you, know? you went out. You had a few boozes. You made an ass of yourself at the uh, company, whatever. And now she won't talk to you anymore? Well, she talks, but it's not like... It was, and I wish it were like it was. Well, it was, it you, was rad the whole time. Okay, but and she did as okay, much as I did. okay. But here's here's the thing. I I have this uh, theory, which is, if somebody will not forgive you, they do this in movies all the time, but it's not reality. If somebody doesn't forgive you for one screw up, they weren't that into you. Okay. And you get caught up in the screw up. But you should really focus on the part where they weren't that into you. Right, they were looking for a reason to get out. Because if they're really into you, they'll forgive you for multiple. Oh. What well, if you were to, I'm sorry to interrupt. What if you were told by this person, even in the first couple weeks of the whole relationship, I guess you could call it, what if they were telling you every day how into you they were and how nice to them you were and you had never got that from any other girl before and you were uh, glad that you were appreciated? I'd be suspicious. Hold on, is she talking about me? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Joe, here's here's the thing, and and I know it's frustrating, and this is stuff that guys get caught up to uh, up in when they're younger. Yeah. Why, why, why? Mm -hmm. She said she was into me. Why, why, yeah, why? Yeah. We did this. We held hands. Oh, we yeah. made out. Forget the why. Why did she ask me to go away? Well, why does why does anything go that way? Why does somebody hire you and then fire you six months later? Right. Why you do not have that job? Why you do not have that girl? Doesn't matter. Why? You, you why? Ain't, you ain't why, got it. Why? Yeah. Yes. The point is, is the bottom line is is I like, I like the bottom line. You're out of the you job. You don't have anything out, out of the relationship. Or you're out of the whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's could, the part you got to listen. He sort of can make an overture to her, but if she's out, she's out. Well, look, you can you can say to somebody, hey, "I'm really sorry for what happened. I messed up once. I, I'm not going to let it happen again. But give me another chance." But if they don't take you back at that point. They weren't that interested in you. And honestly, I think Joe really needs to look at his mental health. That all that tangential quality to his history is sort of a manic quality. And then he's uh, he drinks, you know, he's he's out on a nice uh, sort of uh, vacation with some group of people he doesn't really know, and he l gets loaded to the point he, we don't even know what he did yet. The no. guy knows what he did. I'm guessing he whipped it out. Uh, at least that's what I think. In peeing places. And oh, well, like let's that. see, Joe. Hello. Yeah, give us the worst thing that you did while you were loaded in Palm I, Springs. The worst thing that I might have done was... Might. I, no, that she said you did. That she said I did? She never even... She talked to me and acted, you know, and uh, said, hey, don't worry about it, but... What's the worst thing you did? Uh, that I can remember. No. You were told... What is the worst thing you did, period? The, the worst thing that I've yeah, done the, at the weekend was probably getting drunk, getting as drunk as I did. That was the worst thing And what thing did I you did. do while you were drunk? Acted like an idiot. What probably. did you do while you were drunk? Picked a couple fights. Okay. okay. Right. So you went and uh, found the head of sales and shoved him or something. All right, Joe. That's uh, that's uh, very antisocial behavior. But what, what do I do from now on to not destroy my character worse? With okay, this? don't get loaded. And if you have a family history of alcoholism, which I suspect you do, you might really look into that. That's something you need to treatment. Yeah. Yeah, if she didn't want you back, move on, man. Mm. That's it. Absolutely. Let's talk to uh, Renee. Renee? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Um, I, I always count my words and I'm words that other people are saying that I have a conversation with. Mm -hmm. Hold and on. How, how, how many did you just use there? Well, I, it comes and goes. <laughs> it's never any good payoff. But <laughs> so I, you didn't count that salvo? You know, if you would have just thrown out 15, he would not have known the difference. No, I would have went back and <laughs> studied the tape tonight when I got home. Well, it comes and it goes. Okay. I mean, like, tonight is not bad, but I'm also like, I'm counting how many times I blink and stuff like that. And I have to blink in even amounts of numbers. And <sighs> How uncomfortable. Do you pull your hair? No. Do you wash your hands a billion times? I'll wash them, like, I have to wash them once and then over again. I have to. 
Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I scratch my balls and floss. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have none of that. I wish I had a little of that. Okay, so are there any other weird thoughts, or do you believe you're going to die if you don't do these things, that kind of thing? No, it just really, really bothers me. Are there other intrusive thoughts other than the ritualistic behaviors? No. Hey, you, and you don't have any feeling of any consequence if you blink an odd number of times, for instance? No. Are I, you think on... I know I have to blink one more time to make an even amount. Oh, well, do you know, I had a friend on Crystal Meth who would do that. Yeah, fat man, but this is this is true. I don't use any drugs. Yeah, this is true OCD. This is true obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a disorder of a region of the brain that drives these behaviors. Well, uh, Renee, let me ask you a quick question. I don't I don't want to screw up your your telling, but when you do the when you do the counting with the blinking, how do you know when it stops and starts? Since blinking is just sort of an ongoing process, her, you know. Her head just exploded. Not- uh-oh. All of a sudden, I'll just think that I have to start, I don't know, I'll just all of a sudden start doing it. It's Again, it's not a rational cognitive process. It's from a very primitive drive center in the brain that just activates behavior. Mm-hmm. Obviously, she knows these are not rational. Obviously, she control them if they, she could, but she can't. Mm-hmm. And that's in the nature of this condition. I just blinked ten times. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm now counting my blinks. It's like yawning. I'm going to count those two now. So, Renee, how long have you had this for? Um, about seven years. But you don't have other things, no hearing voices or seeing things or anything of that sort? No, nothing like that. I have a history of um, bipolar disease in my family. I didn't know if it was linked to anything like that. Mm, I don't think this is bipolarity per se, but but uh, having mental illness in the family does figure into this. Okay, well, this is something that's highly, highly treatable. There are lots of things people are doing for this, and it's a com- relatively common condition. So what? Do you, do you have other rituals? Uh, medications? Uh, that, that's sort of the one way of doing it. Do you have any rituals otherwise? Do you have to you know, eat with utensils a certain way or... And just an even amount, things like that. Like my radio has to be set in even numbers and if things If you like go that. in and out of your room, do you have to do certain things? Flick yeah, lights, I, light switches on and off a certain number of times? And yep, everything. I'm, it's with everything. Yeah. All right. That's really good. And do you, do you have that other thing that OCD gets is where you, you like, uh, close your garage and you drive away or maybe walk or ride your bike away or whatever. You're 19. Drive away. And uh, then you're you're halfway to work, and you think, "Did I close the garage?" Even though you knew you closed yeah. the garage, you have to go back and see that the garage is closed. I do that. Yeah, yeah a lot of yeah. people do that, but that's part. Of, they really is disabling for people with OCD because they can't get to work. They keep doing that kind of thing. All right, so uh, go in what psychiatrist? Yes, psychiatrist who's used to dealing with this disorder because there's a lot of things that can be done with this now. Okay. All right. All right. Good times, though, right? All right. Yeah. Good All times. right. Thank you. Good times. It, it's always even numbers. People don't odd usually is bad get luck. caught on yeah. the odd. Odd is bad luck. But since when is odd bad luck? Like, for instance, with uh, the Japanese, on their table, they'll have a place setting for three. Well, maybe because o- an even number is bad luck for them. Maybe OCD in that country, it's odd numbers. It's turned around? Maybe. Like uh, like they have right-hand drive? Hang on a second, i got to blink ten times. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine counting the number of times. I uh, I have the same thing. Uh, odd and even. It's with beating off. I got to do it even. I'm I, I got to go for like eight or ten. I must be psychic today. Yeah. I knew you were going right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, shocking. Well, yeah. <laughs> so Adam talking about Adam made, a, Adam made a jack off joke. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the presses. <laughs> Well, you got to know that if we're getting an hour and uh, 14 minutes, even number, into the show, and I haven't made a beat-off joke, that the next thing out of my mouth has got to yeah, be a good bet. joke. Yeah, wouldn't have made a bad bet at uh, minute uh, seven into the show either. <laughs> Wait a minute, odd number. Minute eight, even number. Let's talk to uh, Joe, who's 21. Joe? Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's going on? What's happening? <laughs> oh, not a whole lot, man. Yeah, uh, all right, buddy. Why don't we just, just dude... Dude, what yeah. it is? What it be right, like? Uh, I'm basically what it is is I have a a urinating problem. Mm-hmm. You have sh- pee shy? Yeah, it's just um, you know, public places I just can't do it. You know, I mean, I mean, I can, I I do. I mean, but it just I'm sitting there, you know, and my my thing's just hanging. You know, I've had like, some people that just can't. They cannot. They lock down. Yeah. And that, that's you know, if a you're lot a male, of people. yeah, if you're a male, that is an incredibly difficult issue because men in public are required to pee in the troughs. Uh huh. You know, you've been to the Rose Bowl or the Dodgers. Oh, Dodgers Stadium's got like, urinals now. I think. I don't know, uh, but yeah, they're uh, you, you have to whiz with other guys. 
So that that is basically, I mean, that's a common thing. It's not like, I mean, I felt like I was just like... No, it's a fairly common thing. Yeah. Fairly you know, I, I am incredibly pee shy. Um, and a lot of times I'll go to a urinal and I'll, I'll, I'll try to pee and there'll be pee, somebody will come right next to me and I'll feel like the guy thinks I'm checking him out because I'm, I stay there the whole time. And he, <laughs> that, he can't get started? Yeah, I can't get We're started. We're discovering some interesting things about DJ, though. And he drives back home to check the garage door. And, and I, my hip is numb. Do you have to do you count do you count uh, cracks in the sidewalk and that kind of thing? No, I don't. Uh, well, what about if you start peeing and a guy slides up next to you? Will you oh, keep going? No, that's fine. I mean, that's cool. I mean, Yeah, me too. I'm, sometimes I'm able to just, you know, do it with no problem. But uh, I, I just, you know, when I'm alone, it's just so much easier. I'm just... Bam, you know, let's get out. All right. All right. But he's able to do it. Yeah, he's able he's, he to do it. He just wants to know that it's he's okay. It's not a big deal. But I, I, I never knew what a problem this was until uh, on the man show, I uh, peed on a guy's wallet mm. on stage. On command. Just turned my back to the audience, threw his uh, wallet in a uh, urinal, and began whizzing immediately, and for quite a, quite a lengthy time, too, I must say. And got more positive feedback, and boy, it really... Uh, <laughs> You really want to go home and shoot yourself. That <laughs> the most positive feedback I've ever gotten from anything I've ever done on stage was weighing on this guy's wallet. People coming up and going, "Wow, I couldn't do that. That's a, that's amazing." And I, it dawned on it wasn't any big deal to me, but it dawned on me that most guys, I would say over fifty percent of guys, if you put an audience out there, especially and told them just turn their back the audience and begin whizzing, I don't think they could do it. Yeah. For me, uh, not difficult. It's a gift. True, you have that gift, right? That would be no problem. We whiz in front of each other every night. Yeah, yep. Eric? Yeah, what's up? You're 24? Yeah, I had a question about, uh, I've been seeing this girl for three years. We've been together and committed to each other. And I just found out that uh, she had a fling with, with a, a guy. And um, we had a threesome a, a week after that, but I just found out. So uh, Wait a minute, you had, you, wait, 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 hold on, I'm slow down. This guy that she's cheating with, uh-huh. Is the same guy that you had a threesome with? No. No, 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 no. no. We had a threesome with her best friend. It was a female. A yeah. week a, a week after she had cheated. Right. And yeah. I, I, Drew always says once it gets to that point, you're, it's pretty much done. It's so. toast. Yeah, this thing's toast. It's toast? <laughs> it's toast, yeah. At least, at least you got your threesome before you had to get out. You got your threesome. Now it's time to... Time to right. But she she's really sincere about it. And, and About what? She just cheated, she cheated with a good friend of yours? No, no, no. I don't, I don't know the guy. Um, True, but, you're uh, all over the place. I heard her say it something was, about a friend. Yeah, it was her best friend that her she friend. had the threesome with. Right. And she oh, was unfaithful to me with another guy. Why, why did she tell you that she cheated on you? She did it. I, I found out. How? I, I found a phone number. I called and uh, I talked to the guy and, and he was straight up with me. So. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. How, how Wait can a you be surprised about if you're bringing other people in your relationship, if she wants to have sex with other people than you? Like, well, I don't understand that. It was her best friend, and she said, oh, it was just, you know, oh, we, were in case. Into it. we were at a party. It was this a is, party is it, we where was this phone number that you found? Yeah, I found it in her, uh, in her, her, her wallet. In her wallet. Right, and but that was the number of her best friend, right? No, this guy. No, that this was, guy. no I, I know, I know, the threesome was her friend too. But at a at a, at a later point, in the discussion, sound like said, yeah, it was her best friend. She yeah. wanted to. So you found the, his party. his number in the wallet, and his right, name and uh, I, his name yeah, was I, with I it. Called. No, no, I, I kind of suspected. Cause I, I, I know so you just found a random number in her wallet, and so you went ahead and called it? Yeah, I called and said, hey, is, uh, and I said, hey, is like, my buddy Dave there? And he's like, no. I said, well, what's well, how did you know his name? was? How did you know his name was Dave? No, no, I just made up a name. I and, see. And, and then I go, who's this? And then he said his name, and I knew who he was. I knew it was him. And that's how I found out. Mm. So I, 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 I started talking to him, and he, uh, he explained what was going on. So I confronted her about it, and now she's, you know, she's trying to save this, and she's crying, and... You know, we had a long talk about it, and now she's saying, you know, it was it was just, it was a one-time thing; it won't happen again. Mm, you know? yeah. Yeah, well, this happens all the time on the Ricky Lake show, and let me tell you, it's never <laughs> a good thing. Yeah, this and, and the fact that she went with the uh, threesome too. This is a chaotic chick, Eric. Okay. I mean, you must know she's the chaos queen, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I've been with her for three years, and then you know, this is the first time that this has happened. But I don't want to be a hypocrite because early in our relationship, I kind of screwed around a little bit too. You know, she doesn't know that. Well, there's a lot of lot of chaos between the two of you. Which well, is I mean, not, not uncommon. People okay, in early 20s. look, here's the plan. Don't have any kids. Okay. That's the plan. I mean, uh, look, it, here's, here's what I'm saying to everybody who's in this situation. Uh, you like her. You want to stay with her. You busted her for cheating. But you, you screwed up yourself. We're only human. 
you had a threesome. You know she's a little. Uh, what do you, What do you think she does for a living? Stripper? No. No. It's a receptionist or like like a yeah. Eric. Yeah. What she do for a living? Yeah, she works uh, like a receptionist type job. All right, Drew. But she's but she's also uh, she also um, she's a cheerleader for a uh, arena football league or something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's. We both should get points for that. Yeah, she's yeah, probably I, getting. I, I really. Not, I, I don't buy this call at all. I just yes, whatever we say. No, I, I listen. What What do you think she could? She's a cheerleader for what, Eric? Yeah. What kind of What kind of cheerleader? Arena football. What's yeah. The, well, what's the name of the team? The uh, they're in San Diego. The Riptide. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Listen, she's a cheerleader. She sure as hell ain't in college, and she ain't cheering for uh, yeah. for the Bolts. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's got to be... Uh, Ann would know. Ann knows uh, every cheerleader who's... Uh, <laughs> on the, the Chargers. <laughs> on the Chargers, yeah. <laughs> Personally, uh, intimately. Ann's a maniac, by the way. About Ann, the Chargers? Yeah, oh, Ann. No uh, yeah, producer Ann loves the San Diego Chargers, which is really one of the... A heartbreaking team to like, you know. And... Uh, they had one, last, one winning season in the last 20 years. Last week, we are talking about uh, Lyle Alzado. Oh, yeah. And, like... I don't know how it came up, but Lyle Alzado was this. Uh, oh, he started with uh, Denver, and he went to uh, he went to the Raiders, and then he did some TV shows. He was a personality, one of these sports guys, and uh, he got brain cancer from doing roids, probably, and died about eight or nine years ago, probably. And Anne came in, and she's like, uh, "He's dead." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, he died about it." Oh, good. I said, "Good." The guy died of brain cancer eight nine years ago. Oh, no, 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 this guy was a Raider. It's like, okay, he was a Raider for the last four or five years of his of his playing career, and then he died of brain cancer at age 39 or 40. Yeah, good, good riddance. <laughs> As if he's going to have like a comeback. It, I mean, that's hardcore. That's a hardcore, that's a hardcore Chargers fan there. Hardcore. Hardcore. You're, you're glad even the retired guys are dead. All right, let's take a little break, huh? Yeah. DJ Qualls is our guest tonight. We'll, uh... You can see him in The New Guy, which is out uh, this Friday. We'll uh, be back after this. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. DJ Qualls is our guest tonight. The New Guy, which is going to be out coming up uh, this Friday. Out in theaters and wide release. All right. Drew? Yeah. Are you around all here? Yep. You tired tonight? Nope. No? Nope. 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 Huh? Thought you were yawning. Jared? Hello? Hello? Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello? Hey, what's going on, man? There, Jared. How are you? What's up? <laughs> well, here's the deal. Well, I just, uh, me and my girlfriend were getting a little bit busy last weekend and uh, using uh, Trojan condoms, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, your guys' show says they're the best and everything. Trojan's the you know, number one condom, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the deal. The thing broke on me, right? Mm-hmm. That was, we were only like, what, geez, a whole two and a half minutes into it, right? Right, and you know the condoms break, right? Well, see, here's the deal. I, I've, never, I've never used one before. We, you know, we were busy losing our virginity to each other, and we didn't have any sort of clue that these things break, There's right? another I don't buy it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, what do you want? Well, I mean, what kind? What kind would you suggest? I mean, because the Trojan they all they all break, Jared. They all break. If they you, all break. So, of course, they all know, break. What, what do you do about this? Do you do you know stop every five minutes and switch, or you know, yep. what's the deal? That's what you do. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan, America's most trusted condom for over eighty years. Okay. All right. Well, what kind of thanks. voiceover is that? Sort of half stoner, half. It sounds like the guy <laughs> jerking off. Like, it's a brand new it's my Jordan. Jordan. It's like I, I don't know. Should I have a B-load or should I beat off again? I guess when you got to get a voice of a condom for a condom manufacturer, it's 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 this tricky. Is, stoner surfer. Yeah, I guess so. Down. All right. Hey, uh, so here's the deal. Well, let's talk about this for a second. True, they do have breakdowns of uh, which condoms break down the most, don't they? Yeah, once you, in a while they consumer, publish an article. Consumer Reports put something out every like three or four years. You could but, probably go on the uh, web and uh, check out Consumer yeah, Reports a- and find out the, which condom was the most a- durable, a- right? But there, there really is not a huge difference amongst condoms. The fact is, you need to use 
preferably latex if you're trying to prevent STDs. You need to use it properly. You need to roll the tip down, leave sufficient room there. You need to roll it down to make sure it's all the way on. You need to hang on to it when you're pulling out. You need to check frequently to make sure it's it's intact. You have to make sure that it's sort of current, hasn't expired, hasn't it's not expired. been kept in your brother's wallet your glove while he was in Korea yeah. for uh, 14 years Absolutely. and all that and, stuff. Uh, it's, it's not something that is, you know, it's not a without any, you know, supervision or necessary sort of attention. It's something that, it's a procedure. Right. And you got to go through the procedure. If you don't, it fails sometimes. Okay. And if it failed and you have ejaculated or if it comes off after you've ejaculated, you've got to get that morning after pill. Mm. Love him, line is brought to you by see, Trojan, see have, America's most trusted condom for over ask, 80 years. Ask him about the morning after pill if he's ever heard sure, of that. Sure, do you have to talk over the entire, <laughs> that entire drop? Yeah? What drop? Okay. You see what I got to deal with here? Is the morning after pill legal now? Oh, yeah. Not RU-46. Not, not, it is, actually, the, the board of pills. But the fact is there's pills you can take that prevent a pregnancy from occurring. And people aren't aware of this. It drives me insane. You have, you have 72 hours to suppress ovulation. And you can take these pills within that 72-hour period, and you do not get pregnant. See, I think I saw a special felicity about that yes, a couple years ago when right. they were all, like, broken up about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, what do you want? You want to ask Jared if you ever heard of the morning after pill? <sighs> Jared? Yeah. You ever hear of the morning after pill? I've never heard of the morning after pill. Oh, right. okay. Well, that's, uh, well, Drew just said what it does. Yeah, it's, 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 right. it's, it's called Prevan or Plan B, and you can get it. Actually, in Oregon, you might be able to get it without a prescription now, even. And it suppresses ovulation, so there's never anything, the sperm never gets to the egg. I'm oh. wondering if this guy wants us to tell him he's tell him he's too big for his condom he's looking for something but okay. i don't know what but so here's here's the bottom line with the condoms one may be marginally better or more durable than the other if it is it's 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 less than one percent mm-hmm. it's more about how it's used mm-hmm. how old it is where it was stored absolutely and then some of it just breaks down to dumb luck my understanding is that the sort of novelty color ones and that kind of thing are significantly less effective Okay. But the brand, the major brands are fine. Right. It's sort of like most tires are good for 50,000 miles these days. That doesn't mean you can't get a blowout in any right. of them. That's right. Okay. Let's, good one. Thank you. Let's talk to uh, Preston, who's uh, 17. Preston? Hey. Hey. Um, I, I read somewhere that DJ was a cancer survivor. Yes, I am. You are? Okay. And I read that uh, you used to screw around, like, whenever... You would have a big test or something. You would uh, act like you were sick and have people bring you your book so you could just do the test at home. Yeah, that, I did. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean... Basically, this is how I look at it. Um, it. I was a kid. I was like 15 when I had cancer, and it sucked. So why not take every advantage you possibly can? Yeah. Yeah. Turn uh, lemons into lemonade. What'd you have? Hodgkin's Hodgkin's, something? Hodgkin's, Yeah. And uh, and you're free and clear of that now? Yeah. And can you get Hodgkin's anywhere in your body, or does it have to be in a certain place? You have to it's a lymph, lymph node, primarily. The lymph nodes, yeah. I mean, it gets into the liver and spleen and stuff. It's really common, stages. actually. I've, I've met a lot of people who, especially since I've been here in L.A., a lot of actors have had it, like Jason Schwartzman and a couple other people I know have had it. I mean, it's really common. The, the thing about it is that if you catch it early, it's, it's completely treatable. The unfortunate part about it was that I had about two months left when they caught mine. Two months so to was, live. Yeah, I was really sick. Really? And yeah. how did they how did they diagnose it? Or how did they catch it? Or how did they miss it, more importantly? Yeah, I know. Well, at small town medicine, they uh, thought I had mono uh, for two months. I sat uh, at home just getting sicker and sicker. Oh, my God. They had Jesus. no idea what was happening to me. Wow. And, and so when they did catch it, I mean, literally a couple months, if they would have started treatment a couple months later. They caught it on it. a Thursday, and I was in the hospital on Friday. And? And I was, I was there for three months. Wow. And yeah. did, did they have to take you out of the small town to treat it? Yep. Into the medium or big town? A uh, medium town. Medium. Yeah. Okay. You don't hear about the medium town. You hear about the big yeah. town. You hear about the small town. I wonder about the Isn't medium town. Nashville a medium town? Yeah. Yeah. You go to Vanderbilt? Yeah. All the glitz and glamour of a... Did you go to Vanderbilt? Medium town. Yeah. It's yeah. a really great hospital. Yeah, it is. That's right. We want to get treated for that. It's the same thing with the uh, jewel thieves. You hear about the international jewel thieves? Right. But rarely about the, the regional lo- guys. 
guys just work in the Glendale and, Burbank and, and area. They, the county, the they deserve guys. the props. Yeah, they deserve. Yeah, I mean, how do you think the international guys make it to the international level? They start at the county. Right. They start on the county regional mm-hmm. level, of course. Right, and maybe if, if I get cancer again, maybe I'll work my way up to the Mayo Clinic. Right, yeah. Also... You hear about the master of disguises, but never the guy is just sort of... <laughs> he's all the right. novice of disguise. Well, he's good at some of them. Not all. He's not the master. He's not the master. He's working his way up. He's just getting started. Okay. Hey, DJ, didn't you used to be heavy, too, before you got cancer? Yeah. And well, that's, where, that's by the way, you, you took, you took uh, your, your fingers are probably numb still, too. Yeah, yeah remember same, we talked about it last time. Yeah, it's the same thing, your nerve here. My fingers got. are numb and they're always cold. It's from cisplatinum. Yeah. I mean, from... Uh, uh, at Adrian Meissen and, and Vel... Ben Christine. Yeah, Ben Rather Christine. Ben Christine yeah. Wow. He knows everything. Yeah. It's frightening. Ben Christine, that was the dude who was in the uh, <laughs> Fast and the Furious, right? We had <laughs> him on the show. Diesel. Yeah, Ben Christine. Ben, Di- ben Christine oh, Diesel. Oh, that's right. Ben Diesel that's Christine. that dude. Hey, Preston, any other questions for uh, DJ? Well, no, but I did have one for Drew. Yeah. Um, he was black before he got the cancer. Yeah. yeah. Drew was? No. What, what's up, Preston? Um, well, I've been taking Lortab for a while. Lortab? Yeah. And, 17, uh, for God's sake. What are you taking it for? Well, like, I got it prescribed as a painkiller. Yeah, no kidding, but it's it's op- it's heroin, basically. Yeah. How many did, day are you taking? Uh, like three. Hold on, what are you taking it for? Just for the heck of it, basically. How would you get it prescribed? Well, um, I had it prescribed because... I, actually, I had a bad toothache. Dentist. It, yeah, I had it prescribed when I had my wisdom teeth taken out. Yeah. yeah, my sister had it prescribed, and so she had some left. All right, well, Preston, you got a big problem here. Okay. You're not going to feel. You're going to have withdrawal when you stop. Even at three a day, you're going to you're going to miss it. It's going to feel empty, and it's, you're going to feel this awful sort of we call it dysphoria, really kind of a depressed feeling. Yeah. Okay, you got to look into this. It's going to require a little treatment now. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm getting a tooth pulled soon, so maybe I get some of that, right? Yeah, you probably will. Like, because uh, like, I know if they don't give it to you, call me for it anyway. Then Vicodin didn't do crap. Lord Town Vicodin, the same thing. Oh, I think really? You have to take Fifty of those or something. I need a, uh, a painkiller I can booze with too, uh, and I don't, so I don't want the stuff with the Tylenol, right? Right. What's a painkiller I can booze a little with? Morphine. Oh, morphine. Mm-hmm. All right. Oxycontin. I've got some in the car. Write that down. You got some of that? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some of that. And I need I need a uh, rhino sized dose of that stuff too because I, I just don't get off on it otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, How old is this kid? And he has 17. a, a Lord tab addiction. Well, it's, it's getting going three a day. Heather, he'll, he'll get up to twenty or thirty yeah. a day pretty quick. You're sixteen. Yeah. What's up? I needed I needed to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, I've been going out with this guy for a couple of months, and um, I'm a virgin, and I want I was thinking of. Um, having sex with him and I didn't know what was going to happen like <laughs> during or after in what way like am I going to bleed is it going to hurt it's, like it's not going to feel it. most I women are ask anybody else like yeah you know. You could have some bleeding. You might have some pain, but it's usually not bad, especially at your age. And it's not going to be particularly enjoyable. It's one thing most women say at, at your age when they <laughs> well, have their first experience. It'll be and, some... um, and do you think? And um, after the re- after, how's the relationship going to get? Because I've been well, hearing like right after. Oh my God, you guys have a sex it gets like this huge jealousy thing and i don't know well it gets more intense it's more of a biological bond at that point and is more st- at stake and uh, well you have a boyfriend you've been with for a while yeah and uh, you guys are in love um not really i i want to like i want to do it because i just want to get it over with already then why are you worried about what's going to happen in the relationship if, if you want to if you just want to do it because you know well, once I- you have sex you can't go back to holding hands yeah it's gonna but change it. i'm like <laughs> Because, I don't know, like, I'm not really worried about it. I'm just like, what's going to happen? Because me, I get bored with guys really easy. Like, mm-hmm. I move from guys, and I don't know why I do that. Well, that I usually just, means uh, trouble with intimacy, of trouble being becoming close to someone. Yeah, and even but, It's interesting, you, your sexuality, even as you experience intercourse with someone, it's, it's something separate from intimacy. It's something I just got to get over with. And uh, you know, it's, it's something's up here. Yeah, where's Daddy? Um, <laughs> he's here and there. He's here, here and there. there. Got that Adam? Write it down. Here and there. <laughs> now, ready? Yeah. That narrows it down to the planet. 
Um, what do you mean? He's out of your life? He's in your well, life? He's, like, he'll be here. Like, there's been trouble between my parents, so... All right, listen, forget it. <laughs> like, no, no. Uh, look, uh, listen, I, I can't, I don't want to argue with everybody. I, I, it, it, it's, I'm a goddamn in, interpreter at the uh, retard teenage UN. <laughs> he's here, he's there. <laughs> Well, he's what's everywhere. that mean? Well, sometimes he's here. You know. I, I don't, I, I listen, I'm not going to squeeze everyone like a goddamn bar rag to get answers out of them. Mm -hmm. If you can't come up with an answer, fine. You don't come up with an answer. But here's how it works. You don't come up with an answer, we don't come up with an answer. We ask you a question about your past. You don't want to talk about it. We ask you a question about your family situation. You don't want to talk about it. That's fine. We work like a bank. The loan off, you want money. You say, you know, the loan officer says, uh, what kind of collateral do you have? You say, none of your goddamn business. And he says, fine. Go away. Go away. That's the way this works. So, d I would recommend that uh, Heather hangs on to her virginity. Yeah, very definitely. That, 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 and that she really look into her capacity to be close with people. And and don't just sort of get it over with, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, it, it's something that's supposed to be part of an intimate Expression is part of something, the development of an intimacy, and it's going to create all kinds of heavy feelings that you're not going to be prepared for. Yeah, see if you can uh, establish a good relationship with a guy. Yeah, well, so much she's kind of maybe in one with right now, but sort you know, of trying to sabotage that. Sarah, Sarah, who is 15 and sleeping. Oh, Sarah's been on hold for 84 minutes and 49 seconds. Yeah, she's gone. True, that's almost an hour, is it not? <laughs> it's 100 minutes in an hour, right? <laughs> Hello? Sarah? Oh. Hey, Drew? Yeah. They don't have metric time, do they? No. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, 100 minutes an hour. All right? 100 somethings. Yeah. Yeah, hey. we, we, call, we call them hours. We need 100 of them in a day, too. Yeah, it'd be like. Or we could have 10 of them in a day, I guess. Well, here's my point. There's too many, uh, too many, you know, sometimes I just sit around and think, wait a minute, how many ounces in a, in a gallon? How many how many days in a week? How many uh, how many minutes in an hour? It's all random. I just thought everything should just be ten or a hundred. Let's yeah, go metric. Well, let's let's uh, go metric with time. It was coming in nineteen eighty two. No, it was coming in nineteen seventy eight or something. Let's take a little break. Yeah, we'll be uh, be back in ten hours. <laughs> 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 or ten minutes. Or ten seconds. Some increment of ten. All right? Yeah, ten meccans. Ten meccans after this. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm Adam. That's uh, Drew. DJ Qualls is our guest tonight. The new guy. The name of his movie. He is starring in it. He's a skinny white kid who's uh, climbing the rope and having the fire set under him. And uh, that is coming out this Friday. I was asking Drew if there was a metric time. I didn't know of any, neither did Drew. David says there is. David? Hi. Metric unit of keeping time? Yeah, it's really cool. Hey, guys, I just want to, like, say that you guys are, like, my heroes. Adam, Thank I've you. I've been to you guys for, like, two years. Thank you. You guys are the best. Thanks, my buddy. My girlfriend got me onto you guys. Thank her. <laughs> now, what's the metric unit of time? Um, it's it's kind of cool. My science teacher was raving about it last year. It's uh, it's a hundred minutes in an hour and ten hours per day. Oh, just like we said. Yeah, it's we me. No, I said the, I, I said the ten hours a day and hundred minutes. An That's hour. what I'd like. Does that work out to be twenty four though? No, it's, oh. it's only it's That's only no ten good, hours then. per day, and it's a hundred days a year. Huh. It's it's kind of weird. No. But, uh, but it, no one fault. No one uses it. No, it was actually made for, like, theory, he says. Like, oh, okay. possibly All right. it could happen. Thanks, uh, Dave. Yeah. The Japanese will be using it next year. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and I was saying, yeah, you know, there's milliseconds and microseconds and picoseconds. And, no, you know. but uh, listen, I, I meant does, does it exist? Yeah. Does anyone use it? Not yeah. as someone theorized about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay? Uh, you know, I uh, for years I've wanted to do the um, eight-day week <laughs> so I could have the three-day <laughs> weekend every week. Right. But, right. People aren't using it. It's just, just a theory. One of the things I'm going to push through when I'm in charge, by the way. Good times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk to Rick, who's 16. Rick? Hey. What's happening? I've got kind of a unique problem. Um, I'm 16, and um, right, pretty much a regular kid, I think, but I've still got seven baby teeth. Where? Um, mostly my molars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even, even out of those, uh, only two are loose. 
Wow. And what does the dentist say? He hasn't said anything. He says they'll eventually come in, but, you know, it's it's getting to a point when I'm kind of embarrassed, you know. And Why? I Why? Are, they, are they small? Are they huh? small? Hmm? Are they small? Um, they're, they're regular size, but I mean... Regular like, size. I mean, but it's I, still a very humiliating experience. Yeah, like when you lose one, you know, what's that hole? I just lost a baby tooth. Oh. You know, most kids went through that when they were like 6th, 7th grade. Yeah, people are always in my mouth. Yeah. It's like, what's that hole? Yeah. How, how are they, how are really? Is this, is this big, big, make a big impact in your life, people? Well, not really. I'm just wondering, teeth? you know, why? When okay. Most people went through that like 6th Well, when you're 16, grade. you don't want to be different in any way right. at all. But on the other hand, no one can tell. And I don't know what this means. Is this delayed puberty? Do you have pubic hair and that kind of stuff? Yeah. I mean, I'm like six feet tall. You know, everything else is normal. Everything works? Mm-hmm. All right. And the dentist doesn't seem concerned? Yeah. That's fine. Hmm. I have to get a tooth pulled, not oh. a baby tooth. Uh-oh. I'm hoping it's a teenage tooth. Uh-oh. Is there any, is there a third tooth in between uh, baby and adult? A young adult, an adolescent tooth. Is there? Oh, it's no. Bad. That's bad. Yeah. This, this is the one they've been working on for all these couple of years. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God I had the three root canals done on it before it's going to be pulled. Are they going to be your bridge? Or they, they, you know, when they start explaining what they're going to do to it, uh-huh. I, I just, uh, listen, give me a, give me the 44 and let me just put it on my chin right now. <laughs> Sounds like medical malpractice. I used to work in personal injury. Really? I talk after the show, absolutely. Uh, what else what, did you, what else do you do? Did you, what jobs you had? I was DJ? also in the circus. Really? What? No, please. Uh, no, I worked in personal injury before I became an actor. I'll tell you. For my but is personal a pain and suffering or? is through the roof. No, um, the kind of lawyer who advertises on television. <sighs> you're, you're an attorney? No, paralegal. And completely unqualified, though, because that's how, that's how they make money. They use people who are unskilled to... Do the, do the legwork? To, yeah, to do all the legwork. I can do everything but litigate. If you're ever involved in an accident, you guys call me. Really? Yeah, absolutely. What about my life? I consider that an accident. Yeah, well, I don't think there's much we can do Should, about that. It need more, something more specific? <laughs> all right. I really like to sue my dentist with this uh, tooth mm. thing. I, just, just a pain and humiliation. Now they've got to pull the tooth. That's going to sound great. You know, and they can drug you up all they want. They can numb you up all you want. But you're going to hear some, you hear some great sounds, aren't you? Is it on the top or the bottom? It's on the bottom. All right. Well, that won't be so bad. But if D- it's on DJ the top, was a dentist too. Yeah, I was a dentist. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. And then they put the post down into the thing, and then they build the build the fake tooth. Oh, so you're going to have the implant? Oof. You have to. Or your teeth will shift, though, right? I thought they just put a little bridge or something. Uh, there, he's going to have the real. Yeah, you're too old. I mean, you're too young to have a bunch of yeah. fake stuff yeah. in your mouth. Oh, who cares? Who knows? Who cares? But your people are going to make fun of you. They're going to look in your mouth and say, "What's that hole? What's that gap?" Yeah, you're too young for that. Too it's- old for that. I'm going to say, what's that hole in your forehead? And they're going to say, what hole? And then that's when I hit them with the class ring. Jessica? Yes. You're 20? Yeah. Ugh, I just got really depressed about my tooth. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, basically, I have two little sisters that I look out for a lot. And um, my dad has, like, a pornography problem where he keeps Playboys everywhere. Just Playboys. Yeah, well, he's not just Playboys. He also has, like, a voyeurism problem where he... I've caught him a couple of times looking in other people's windows, stuff like that. Mm, looking out his house into the neighbor's yard? No, like, going into the neighbor's yard and looking in the window. Yeesh. You've caught him actually on the neighbor's property looking through the window. Yeah, but that was when I was 12, so I didn't know what to do about it. Uh-huh. What about Mommy? Where's she? Oh, um, well, they're divorced. They've been divorced since I was three. And you're living with Dad? Um, I visit every other, like, every once in a while. And where do the sisters live? With my dad. They're my half-sisters. Eh. Um, the step, my stepmom just doesn't seem to care at all. She knows about everything, but... How old are they? Six and seven. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. They'll be strippers. Or lesbians. This is horrible. Have they got, have you talked to your dad about it? Um, I tried to confront him about three years ago, but he's the type of guy who blames everyone else. Yeah, yeah no, no, no confront. Just say, hey, can you lock this stuff up so my sisters aren't exposed to it? That's all. Yeah, but how do you... That's really hard to do because a lot of parents are walking around with that mentality like, I'm the parent, don't tell me what to do. I mean, if I said my, to my dad, change any of your behaviors, he would be like, get out of here. Yeah, mm. if I tried that on my dad, he would have went, who are you? Yeah. 
<laughs> what are you, you doing new my, here? What are you doing in my house? Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think you're you're an adult now. You're not having to live with him, right? Well, that's the problem. I'm kind of almost at a legal position. I have to, you know, report anything. But, yeah, he's my dad, and mm. he keeps them, you know, where, where my sisters can find them. Like, uh, okay, you know, listen. Doors. Jessica, why don't you have a sort of non-confrontational, sort of judgmental discussion with him where you can just go, you know, I've noticed this and I've noticed that, and... Uh, It'd be be best if the girls didn't see this. So maybe yeah. maybe if you just kept it under the bed. Yeah, I know you want what's best for them. It's, it's they, just, they know this yeah, isn't good for you kids. You send a little uh, people, especially a holes, are much better at hearing things when you don't kind of come at them. Well, that's why I said she said she confronted him. I was like, it's not confrontation. It's just bring it to his attention. Yeah, I know. But you know, imagine the energy that she has with this world class a yeah, hole and yeah. her upbringing. Right, so it's right. hard to get into anything with him that doesn't end up coming without a bunch of poison spilling out. Right, right. Because it's all stored up. Yep, yep. Think about that. All right, let's uh let's take a little break. We'll be right back. I want to thank DJ Qualls for coming in here. The new guy, everybody. The new guy. It is in theaters on Friday. Please go out and uh, see that movie. We would certainly appreciate it. And uh, DJ, come back uh, when you're uh, plugging uh, the new movies, uh, Lone Star State of Mind and uh, The Core. Yeah, or if, you're, if you're ever hard up for a guest, somebody doesn't show, just give me a call and I'll come over. Really I'm far away. Pajama questions or yeah. cast, cast good questions. Yeah, just call me. Good. You, uh, you're you living in town? Yeah. I live in Santa Monica. Fantastic. Perfect. Yeah. It's not really in town, though. I don't really count that as in town. But, uh, yeah, we enjoyed having you. And, uh, yeah, let's not make it uh, two years when these movies come out. Uh, come back, give them a plug in the fall. Thanks a lot. So, until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, 